What is up, farming family? How y'all doing today? Today, we are doing the Vatic Pro review. This is the 16 millimeter. I haven't tried the 14 millimeter. I ordered the 16 millimeter and I've been playing it. I played it, I don't remember exactly how many games I played it for, but I played it for a decent amount. And I'm going to discuss what I like about it or what I don't like about it. But first, we're going to get into the specs. And I'm going to pull them up on the screen. That way, I don't mess up and, you know, say something that's completely wrong. But we're going to get into this. I hope y'all are having a good time. I hope y'all are still enjoying your pickleball experience. The paddle, it's made out of raw T700 carbon fiber. And it's weaved together with compressed texturing. It's also got thermoforming around the edges, which means it took the paddle face and it took and they take the edge and they put it inside the paddle, the paddle face, and then they use the heat to press it together. And it said on their main page, I think it was, it takes two hours for them to completely press for a good seal around the edge of the paddle. And it takes five hours for them to make a complete paddle. Okay, it's made with 360 degree molded carbon fiber, which means it is a full one giant piece. It's not like one side and one side put together. It is a complete piece. Its average weight is 8.1. Obviously, it'll give or take point, you know, one or point two. Usually with carbon fiber, they're pretty precise. It's not going to vary a lot like the Electrum version did. The Electrum version, you could end up getting an eight, you could get 8.7. You never knew what you were going to get. Uh, the total length is 16.3 inches. Uh, the width is 7.5 inches. The grip circumference is 4.25 inches, which I actually like. That's a, that's about what I like. Or I'll usually slap on an you know an overgrip over that. Uh, the grip length is 5.3 inches. Yes, it is definitely good for two-handed backhands. I, I will vouch for that. I do two-handed third shot drops instead of doing the backhand third shot drop. I will generally use two hands, and it worked perfectly for that. Uh, it's two ethylene vinyl acetate inserts for, okay, it's for tennis elbow. It's got polymer and high grade performance honeycomb, you know, which a bunch of, you know, the raw paddle or the raw carbon fiber paddles will, you know, talk about the polymer. Uh, the core thickness is 16 millimeter and the edge guard is anti abrasion TPU. I don't know what TPU means, but it's right there. But yeah, those are the paddle specs and the specs are very important when it comes to a paddle, but to me, it's also more, it's more important how the paddle plays. Like if I get out there and I'm smacking a paddle around, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's like, oh, it's got, you know, it's made of raw carbon fiber. It's got this kind of grit. It doesn't matter if it checks all those marks off. It's got to play good. And we're going to talk about how this plays. I'm going to break down individually, you know, what part of the game it is and how I feel like, you know, it works in that game. When I do my serve, I have a lot of power. I do a really powerful, okay, people basically say my arm is like a catapult. It goes straight down. There's no side spin or anything. I put a lot of top spin on my serves. And with this paddle, it felt like the top spin was just ridiculous. One time I did a top spin serve, the ball literally off the bounce, bounced like this high up off the ground. And the person had to scrape their paddle just to be able to dig the serve out and I have never had one stay that low off of a serve. It it was amazing. It felt really, really good. And then the return of serve, it was flawless. Like anytime anybody did a serve or anything like that, it didn't take a lot of swing power. It didn't take a lot of, you know, focus or I didn't have the focus on hitting it perfectly in the middle. If the sweet spot was big enough to where even if I slightly messed up, I was going to get the return of serve pretty deep due to how the paddle is. The paddle has a pretty, I can't say a pretty significant amount of pop because the pop's there, but it's not like a Ben John's Hyperion pop. I would put it right down below it, not like Gearbox or any of those, but just right below the um, Hyperion Ben John's. Okay, now drops. Dude, the drops were amazing with this. When I did my under, when I did my slice drops, I fe it felt like when the ball hit the ground, it was spinning back a lot quicker than it did with my Black Ace Pro Kinex paddle and with my Gearbox paddle. It felt like this, it was just gripping the ball better. I don't know 
I haven't checked out um, Chris's from Pickleball Studios chart yet to see what the rotations are on it. I'm very curious. I should have checked that out before doing this. But I wanted to give you all my opinion without seeing, you know, other stats and being like, oh, well, yeah. And then using those stats as info. I want to tell you all how I personally feel about the paddle. Drives felt amazing with this. The pop was perfect. I didn't have with the gearbox. You have to rear back and you have to put a lot of swing and a lot of effort into it in order for the ball to, you know, have some sort of velocity. Well, with this paddle, I felt that you could swing just an adequate amount and get the, you know, adequate, adequate speed you need. Then you get the top spin, which would allow the ball to dip quicker than it would with how my gearbox would. But gearboxes aren't, you know, the 14 millimeter isn't specifically known for having power. So it makes, you know, a lot of sense that this was, you know, a lot easier for me with my drives and stuff like that. Dinks. Okay, this is where I struggled at the beginning because I'm used to playing with the gearbox generally. So whenever a ball was dinked to me, I caught myself popping the ball up a lot originally. But then after a game, game and a half, I started dialing it in and I started um, dinking the ball perfectly at people's, you know, if I was right handed, I was dinking it perfectly at their left ankles to where they were having to make a decision to get it out of the air or to let it bounce. And it was causing a lot of people problems, especially the slice dink. People don't see that much where, you know, where I play at. So when you do something like that, it's, it's a little confusing. Resets. Okay. This is probably the one, I can't say negative to it, but one thing that I struggled with was when people would go to spike the ball and I would try to block it and reset it. It would propel the ball, you know, at a decent speed over the net. A lot of the times I would, you know, it'd propel the ball perfectly right over the net, but then other times it would launch it. It was mainly due to the fact that I'm used to the CX-14 where I can just put the ball down, you know, or I can put the paddle down and hit, and it's just going to go barely over. It's not going to send it. And this paddle was completely different, so it was just an adjustment period. But overall, if I played with it a lot longer, the dinking would not be a problem at all. It was just a problem the very, you know, at the very beginning, which is going to happen pretty much with a new paddle. Same with resets. Resets is going to be a struggle at the beginning too when you get a new paddle because it's going to feel different bouncing off of it. Singles or doubles? Okay. To be honest, this paddle has a little bit of both. Like, I feel like it is very controlled and it has the power needed to be able to do doubles. I don't think you're going to be able to be as aggressive as you will with like the power airs, the um, black aces and stuff like that, but you're going to have enough power to be able to use this in singles as well. The pros, it's got a lot of control. It's got pop. It's made of raw carbon fiber, so it is going to last a really long time. It is a unibody paddle, so it's not going to snap like at the handle like, you know, your Ben John's paddle would or anything like that. It's just a very durable paddle. And the sound it makes is a, is a really good sound as well. The cons. Okay, I've played with this paddle for one day. I don't know if you can see it, but there's already paint chipping off of it i don't know how that's going to look in 30 days i'm going to do a 30-day review in the future and i will you know break down how this looks and how the paint looks i know the old selkirks had a problem where the paint would chip i'm hoping this doesn't have that problem but time will tell and i'll make sure to let you guys know but yeah overall this is it's a pretty good paddle i ordered it for my mom and whenever we got to the courts I was like I'm just going to go ahead and try that today and see how it plays not disappointed at all if you are needing a paddle and you know you don't have one this is a good paddle to buy if you are on a budget and you're not wanting to spend $200 this is a good paddle to buy but if you have let's say I don't know, another raw carbon fiber paddle and it's not completely worn and it's still in pretty good shape. I don't know if I would spend money on another paddle, but if I was to buy one for the value, I would probably buy this one. But yeah, this has been my review of the Vatic Pro um, 16 millimeter. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. It will help my channel. My channel's a new channel. I plan on doing a lot more reviews and 
basically a bunch of drills and stuff like that. Just whatever you all recommend in the comment section, pretty much. But I hope you all have a good day. Hope you all stay safe. Drink plenty of water. My cats are huffing. Peace, y'all.